Thanks for watching On Call for All Kids. Today we're talking about pediatric asthma. We'll get questions answered about symptoms of asthma, what a flare up is and how it's treated, and how parents can help control asthma in their kids. I'm joined by Dr. Deanna Green. She is the director of the Cystic Fibrosis Center at Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital. Happy to see you, Dr. Green. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Ashley. It's my pleasure to be here with you guys today. So asthma is a common chronic condition in kids. Can you kind of describe to us what this is? Definitely. Um, in the simplest form, asthma actually just means chronic inflammation in your lungs. Inflammation is caused by thousands of different things out there. It can be your genetics, exposure to infections like viruses or bacteria, just a change in our weather, like having cold air or changes in air pressure, exercise, a change in emotions, allergies, smoking, chemicals, pollution. These are just a few of thousand things out there that could cause it. And so because of that, your body's reaction is also kind of varied. People think of asthma mostly because of people who flare up and have more problems with how they're breathing but you can always have this at kind of a low grade level. And the flare up is just when it's higher than what you can really handle. Yeah, so what exactly is a flare up and what do those symptoms look like? Absolutely. So number one, you have to understand the lungs themselves are kind of pretty and pink and they're always looking that way. And as you get more inflammation, you tend to get more redness within your airway and then over time, that redness leads to a point where you actually have mucus buildup and it's not this pretty pink sign anymore. That mucus buildup causes you to cough a lot more often. And people think about that continually cough leading to more inflammation to the point where it's almost completely closed. You can't get any air through here as opposed to this airway, which has normal air. When that happens, it causes a wheeze or an extra noise that people are looking for. And again, as you're continuing to clear it, patients start looking like they're working harder to breathe. They can't get air in because it's all clogged up. And all of those things lead to patients moving their shoulders more, flaring their nose out some, and just breathing really fast. So those are the common symptoms that we see. That was a great visual, really helpful to understand what asthma is. So if we go to our doctor, what will they do for us and how is this then treated? Well, the main thing to go to your doctor for is if your child's having a really frequent cough or looks like they're having difficulty breathing. And if that's happening frequently, then your doctor is probably going to order you an inhaler. Inhalers look somewhat like this. The most common one can be colored red or blue and they push down on them. And that's how you actually get the medicine in. That, however, needs to be used with a special device that we refer to as a spacer. So spacers can look like this. Um, you have ones that have a mask on top of the patient's face or just a mouthpiece one. And these actually give additional space for the medicine that's actually a powder to become a mist so it can actually get down into their lungs and help open up that airway and reduce the inflammation and mucus that I was just showing you. The first inhaler is one we call albuterol and you take this whenever you feel like you're having a flare up. The second medicine is an anti-inflammatory and it's determined by your doctor whether you need to go on to use that medicine or not. And Dr. Green, what else can we do as parents to help control our child's asthma? There are so many different things that you can actually do as a parent, but the most important is to figure out what might cause your child to cough more. So if there's anything you could avoid that will actually help control the inflammation, that will do better in the long run for the child. So number one, if they are exposed to smoking at all, this increases their inflammation almost 50 fold. And so stopping exposure to any type of smoking, whether that's just in the car, um, in someone else's room or otherwise, um, 
at a restaurant, just trying to keep them away from that ends up being one of the most important things. Um, if you know that they're allergic to something like a cat or dog with the dander or certain molds, trying to keep these down to a minimum within the house. And then most importantly, trying to help your child avoid colds. Right now in the pandemic, that's been great. We've been wearing masks and we've been washing our hands, but continuing that for a long time for your patients to make sure that they're not spreading those germs becomes one of the most important things. And keeping updated on all vaccines so that they're not getting exposed to additional cold viruses becomes really important. And I would also challenge that many patients decide to try to stay away from exercise because they think that's going to make their asthma more difficult to control. But exercise is actually better for the lungs. It helps grow your lung capacity. And so not avoiding that, but helping to control it actually is one thing you can do. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Green. This was really great and useful information. We appreciate you. Thank you so much, Ashley. It's been my pleasure to be here with you guys. And thank you all for watching. Don't forget, you can also check out our website. It's hopkinsallchildrens.org slash newsroom, and you'll find a lot of other timely topics in pediatric health care, patient stories, and other great resources as well. We'll see you next week.